Welcome to Painting and Travel. We're in northern Michigan, taking a ferry from St. Ignace to Mackinac Island, just a short trip away. We'll arrive at the dock, then take a horse-drawn carriage to discover what this most unusual and very pretty town has to offer. Here I'm looking at an historic marker, and this is the very scene Roger has chosen to paint for you. I've taken a screenshot of our video from our trip and that's what I'm going to paint. This is a masonite board covered with gesso, and I've uh, given it a tone of a green. I often use burnt sienna on this, but this painting is mostly green here. There are lots of green uh, trees here and foliage, so I uh, chose to just put a green background on this. On my palette today, I have a number of colors, black, titanium white, ultramarine blue, Cerulean blue, I have a purple, lizard crimson, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, Indian yellow, three earth colors of burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. I have hooker's green. This is a uh, lime green, and this is a chromium oxide green. This is just some clear water here so I can thin my paints without using my dirtier water, which I use to wash out my brush. I'm going to stay away from using white for a while because if I start using that white, things might start to become chalky looking, and that's what I try in my best to stay away from. So I'm going to stay away from that white for right now and just use my dark colors. And this is the case I I almost always start with my darks and work towards my lights. I'm picking up a number of different colors here. As long as they're dark, I think that's all I need. Now I also have my little spray bottle here, and this is really essential when I paint with acrylics. It not only can keep my paints wet on the palette, but that's not primarily the reason I use that this sprayer. It's really to keep spraying my board so these paints will flow around easier on the board itself. Right up here I have a lot of dark colors. These are, these are dark trees back here, so I'm going to just put this in very, very dark. And I'll cut around this historical marker here. And then we have two lovely houses back here. So I'm just going to cut around those as well. Now, I will start using a few of the colors that have uh, white in them that are a little more opaque. So I'll take these greens. We have a uh, some green grass back here. You see, since these few paints I just picked up are more opaque, uh, those opaque paints cover much better. The transparent paints just don't cover very well. You have to go over them a few times. Okay, I can say that's all my darks, for the greens anyway. We have this house back here, which is a, a red color. I'll use lizard and crimson, maybe a touch of this purple. And I'll, I'll put these colors on very thin to start with. Uh, and that will just sort of give me a, a baseline or a guide so I know where to go from there. I never know if these colors are exactly right until I get more of these colors on the, pal on the uh, painting itself. Because they can look right now, but then as I continue on, uh, these adjustments have to be made because one color affects the way another color looks. It's more important to have all the values right in a painting. That's the lights and the darks. 
if the lights and the darks are, are on the money, then uh, the, the painting will, will, will stand up, it'll hold up. But if the values are, are not right, then the painting can fall apart, regardless of the colors. That's why black and white photographs work so well, you, because the values are right, even though you don't have any color.